Welcome to another Barnacle Summary. And as you already know, we summarize Barnacle characters' stories, plots, and other details about them. Today's episode is going to be about the Voyanui Matoran, Dalu. Dalu at some point was damaged and sent to the island of Karzani, where she was rebuilt by the resident of the land. When he failed to rebuild her properly, he sent her away to the southern continent with a pair of chargers to make up for her diminished appearance. During the fall of Matanui, Voyanui rose to the surface of Aqua Magna, bringing Dalu with it. At this point, Dalu became a lot less gamatorn like it's noted. When the Paraka arrived on Voyanui, pretending to be Toa, Dalu tried to consult with Vezok about her anger management issues. But to her surprise, Vezok suggested that she kill the Turaga and take over the Matoran on the island. When Dalu told Vezok that her, their Turaga, Jovan, had died, Vezok replied, stating that he'd like Turaga dead due to an argument with one earlier in his life. Referring to uh, Turaga Duma in one of the stories that was not published as a book. You should probably go check that out. Dalu, of course, slowly backed away and left. Shortly after, Dalu, along with five other Matoran, began to sense that something was terribly wrong with the Toa. They found the Paraka ordering the Matoran to do jobs such as constructing a fortress, which no Matoran would ever be able to use, and draining lava from Mount Valamai. Their suspicion was confirmed when Garen overheard a conversation between the Paraka and realized that they were not Toa at all, just here for the Ignaika. The Voyanui resistance team was then formed, consisting of Garen, Balta, Valkia, Kazi, Piruk, and Dalu herself. They hid away in a cavern to discuss their plans. Meanwhile, the rest of the Matoran colony was enslaved by the Paraka, using the Xamoror spheres with Androdermis instead, from Makuta Teradax. Dalu found out and went to tell the rest of the team, but they were too late by the time they arrived at the scene. <laughs> I just rhymed. They were able to follow the Matoran Dezalok. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And he led them into Mount Valamai, where they were able to witness the enslaved Matoran continue to drain lava from the volcano, in even more dangerous conditions than that of before. When the Toa Inuva arrived to find the Kanoe Anaika, Dalu, along with the others, remained hidden, fearing that they were just another group of Paraka to see them for a second time. A side note, you'd think they'd be smart enough to realize that Toa looked like bigger Matoran and not grinning people with spines, but hey, these Matorans got messed up by a mad warlord, so maybe they have broken memory banks or something. The Toa Nuva were then defeated by the Paraka, and their masks and tools were stripped away. When the Paraka carried the Toa to be dumped into the volcano, a sudden eruption caused the Paraka to drop the Toa to die so they themselves could escape. The Toa managed to avoid being melted, obviously, and were then confronted by the resistance team, exception of Balta, who had gone missing at the time. The team believed the Toa Nuva to be imposters, and a fight occurred. During the fight, Dalu used her chargers to drive Gali insane, more on that later. However, Axon later intervened and the effects were reversed. The fight ceased after Balta reappeared, stating the Toa Nuva were indeed Toa. They should have realized that from the beginning, but like I said, broken memory banks. Theory. Working together, the Toa and Matoran stormed the Paraka Fortress, retrieving their masks and tools. The united teams fought against the Paraka, but were stopped by the sudden appearance of Brutaka, who defeated the invaders in a single blow. The Toa were held as prisoners in a cavern which drained their powers continuously, while the Matoran were held captive in the Chamber of Truth for interrogation. Yeah, they actually named that. That's kind of weird. Later, Dalu managed to escape the Paraka's captivity and ran up a hill. There, she was confronted by the Paraka Zaktan and Hakan. <laughs> these names. She was in the process of being taken back when the two Paraka got in an argument and fought. Zaktan managed to claim victory in the fight after crushing Hakan under a boulder. And while Zaktan climbed to the Antidermis vat, Dalu took her chance and ran back to her friends. Dalu and the rest of her team managed to escape, discovering the new Toa and Nika. They shared details with each other and were given Zamor launchers made by Velika, who can apparently make anything because he's... Yeah, how many? Oh, right, great being. The group was then split up, with Dalu going along with Peruk, Jailer, and Holly to free the enslaved Matoran using Xamor spheres filled with energized protodermis. Yeah, you read that right. The group was then reunited at the Paraka Fortress, where a large battle broke out. While the Toa fought the Paraka, Dalu and her team rushed to find the Toa Nuva. 
After a period of searching, the team was successful and freed the six Toa. The Toa Nuva and the Resistance team rejoined with Axon and the Toa Naika, who managed to retrieve the Mask of Life before the Paraka in the Chamber of Life, although it had plunged into the sea and sunk down to Marinui in the pit. The Toa and the Order of Mananui members split up, with the Toa Naika proceeding to the waters beneath, while the Toa Nuva returned to Metranui and began to prepare the universe for Mananui's reawakening. When questioned, Axon volunteered to remain behind and guard and protect the Matoran. As a result of the efforts of the Toamari, the cord, which was a stone cord which held Voinui anchored to its location, was broken, as was necessary for the revival of Matanui. As a result, Voinui plunged down into the seas with the Matoran on it, who had been reunited with Matoran and Maranui, hiding with Axon in the Nui Caves of Voinui. Dalu returned to the southern continent afterwards. After the events of the Manui story, Dalu was freed onto the planet's surface to live on Spherus Magna. In the Kingdom Alternate Universe, Dalu was one of the Toa created by the Takanuva of that universe. Which leads you to wonder if she looked like Toa Metri Nakama. Dalu has standard Gamatoran abilities, being a good swimmer and having advanced lung capacity. Her true power, however, comes from her chargers, tools capable of briefly fire briefly increasing one of the target's attributes, such as speed, strength, senses, or etc. Though this charging tires Dalu out, she can use her charges offensively, heightening an enemy's senses until they become unbearable. She once did this to Toa Gali, driving her to madness by enhancing the Toa's sight until she could see all existence at the molecular level and beyond. However, that works, but yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Axon had to save her from that one. Dalu was released in the early 2006 as one of the six small Matoran sets, consisting of 25 pieces. Her set came with a brand new shade of blue for her mask, being lighter than the Nokama variant of the mask. Her swords were painfully common, however, but her silver feet were a nice addition, seeing as they were originally from the Borak Cow. Her toy could be combined with Kazi and Garen to make a dagger spider, which, well, was probably the best part about the set. Dalu appeared in three of the first books from the 2006 year, and the fifth one, and in one of the comics. She also appeared in Hope by Lady Kopaka, and was a side note character in the Kingdom serial by Greg. Yeah, she didn't really appear much, just like most of the Voyanui Matoran. They were there for the first three books, got side notes, and that was all. Which is rather unfortunate because she is definitely one of the more interesting Gamatoran. She also appeared, like the rest of the Voinui Matoran in the Voinui Online game, as an escort slash fetch quest. She was an enemy in the Paraka attack games, and she was an obstacle in the Inaika Island attack as well. Dalu was an incredibly unique Gamatoran character. She was the exact opposite of the standard Gamatoran's personality, being incredibly headstrong, brash, and a warrior to boot. Now, originally when I was writing the script, I thought that this was probably part of the reason she ended up on Karzani, and later Voinui by extension. However, when reading through the AlmightyBioSector.com, I found out that I was wrong, and that actually her experiences with these locations made her this way. Now, this begs the question, were other Gamma torn on the island of Voinui like this? Or Maranui? However, all questions aside, personality-wise, she was a win. However, her toy, that was mediocre at best. The swords, as I mentioned before, were extremely common, and most of the parts were also common. However, there was the difference that plagues collectors of Kanohi, her mask being a different hue. Probably a cause of molding differences with the years, because this was like three years after Nukama's set was made. That's, they probably didn't even intend for it to be exclusive. And that's really what makes her set more unique among the Voyanui Matoran is that mask, as all the others just ended up with the exact same copies of the Toa Metru. And that was Dalu. She was quite the unique Matoran in story and had a fairly decent set. Honestly, it came out as one of the best Voyanui Matoran in both of these categories. Well, uh, I'd love if you'd like comment on if you knew about the mass difference before this video, and please subscribe if you enjoyed. And that has been another 10th Symphony recording. Again.
Goodbye. Dalu at some point was damaged and sent to the island of Karzani, where she was rebuilt by the resident of the land. When he failed, he went and sent her away to the southern continent. She was given her pair of chargers to make up for a diminished appearance and be able to function. During the Great Calaticism... Calaticism? 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 How do I say that word? I know I had a comment on it. Calaticism. Cladicism? Cladicism? Oh god, I don't know how to speak.